Welcome to the Life Self Mastery Podcast, where we bring in entrepreneurs who have created online businesses and improved their lifestyles. Here's your host, Rohit Malhotra. Hi everyone, this is Rohit from LifestyleMastery.com and today I'm excited to have Harsh Agarwal, who's a pro blogger and entrepreneur from India. Harsh is the guy behind the famous blog, Shout Me Loud. ShoutMeLoud.com, uh, Harsh covers topics related to blogging, SEO, making money, fair posting, affiliate marketing and social media marketing. Apart from Shout Me Loud, Harsh owns uh, many niche specific blogs. He also writes on his personal blog at 10harsh.com. Harsh has been able to earn thousands of dollars every month from his online blog. Harsh is an engineer and also happens to be my neighbor. Welcome to the show, Harsh. Thank you, Rohit. It's finally good to be here. good to be connected with you here. Absolutely. So you know, you have a fascinating journey. In fact, uh, you, 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 I would say you're the most popular blogger from India. Uh, so you know, can you please share your journey about how, what got you interested into into blogging and into uh, and got you uh, into professional blogger? Sure. So you know, I think my journey started way back when I was a child because I always like liked the idea of journaling. I mean, you know, having a diary and just jotting down my thought. So that that was the inception of me as as a writer. Now, uh, I graduated in 2008. And that's the time uh, I joined a company called Converges, which is like a call center. Right. Uh, and I was doing that just to kill, you know, one year of that waiting period before I joined my main company, Accenture. Okay. And uh, that was the time when I got to know about blogging and I like started a blog just out of curiosity. Uh, that's something that you do out after you work hard, like playing cricket or playing football. So for me, that was blogging. And, and then I started writing for, for, after a few days, like, you know, there are people who commented like, Hey, Harsh, your post was helpful. It helped me to do X, Y, Z stuff. And I, I, I felt really nice. I was like, okay, now I'm doing something significant. I'm actually helping people. And then I started blogging more. Now, uh, fast forward after a month or so, I actually got to know that blogging can help me make money as well. And there was something called Google AdSense and there was something called affiliate marketing. And I was surprised because um, before that, I always thought making money online is like just scam. There are people who ask you to pay money and there's nothing going to happen. But then another one month after I got my, you know, got few payments and I was like, wow, this is some serious stuff. And uh, I wonder why the world does not know about that or that making money online is such a fad. So, uh, so I, then I made a mission that, okay, with Shout Me Loud, I will share, you know, all this thing that I'm learning about blogging and also the most important that they can make money. Because anybody who's making, you know, about 500 or $700 a month, especially in India, I knew that would change their life. Now, I'm, I'm a small town boy and I know the pain of like, you know, that the, how the life works for us. Like you, you graduate, you do a job and then every year your salary increased by 10% or something. Now, that's the life I saw that blogging could, is going to change for me. And that's a dream I had that if I could help even if one person uh, do that with my writing, you know, that's my win. Now, after a few years, <laughs> actually after a few months, after five months or so, uh, the time came when I had to join Accenture. Now, Accenture was a big MNC and probably a dream company for most of the engineers. And, uh, you know, in India, especially like back in 2008, I, I know like how parents get excited about that my boy is joining an MNC. And that's a moment of pride for them in, in the community. But for me, I mean, I think my destiny was something different. I, all I wanted to do is something that does not become a repeated thing, something that makes me feel alive. And I knew programming or working in a company from nine to six is not something that I wanted to do. But, you know, I was young, 22, and I had... Uh, I had not that experience and taking blogging as a career was a big risk. Luckily, I was making about $700 that time and perhaps Accenture was about to pay me the similar kind of salary per month. Uh, so it was a quite, quite a decision uh, turning point for my career because I had to decide, should I take blogging 
should I uh, join my job and leave blogging? Or should I join my blog and do blogging as a part time? So I was in this big dilemma. Um, and then I called one of my friends, I remember Keshav, who was like, uh, you know, my childhood friend, and I always love his uh, input. And, and he, and I asked him, Keshav, you know, I'm in this big dilemma. What should I do? He asked me, what, what do you think, what you should do? Well, I knew what I wanted to do, but perhaps that's the time, you know, when you are in dilemma, you wanted input from others. So he was like, Harsh, we all work in a company so that like, you know, we can get started. But our big dream is after a few years, three years, five years, seven years, 10 years, we want to start something of our own, our own business, our own, uh, something that we can call it, which is ours. Now, you, my friend, you're already doing that. So why, why do you want to go and work in the company? Well, that was a good thought. And I, I felt like he just said something which I was feeling. And then, you know, I was like, okay, let's skip Accenture. Let's see whatever the faith takes me. Um, and I, I totally believed in the future of blogging. And I think it was like April or May. That's the time when I decided that, okay, blogging is what, blogging is what it's going to be for me. And that's, that's how I moved from a part-time blogger to a professional blogger. Very interesting. You know, you, you do have a fascinating journey. I'm, you know, I'm uh, really inspired. I, I don't know how you convince your parents uh, that, you know, uh, to, to take this path uh, long term. But, uh, you know, you've been working from home and, uh, you know, you, uh, you, I just want to know what are the productivity tools that you use to keep yourself motivated to run your blog? Yeah. So I think the initial few years, productivity was never a question. I mean, I didn't, never focused on productivity at all because it was all coming natural. Like all I, all I needed to do is like, you know, do my specific stuff like research and write research and write and reply to users comment. So, and I was enjoying it like day and night. Like there was nothing. Uh, if I, if I don't have to go out, I would actually prefer not going out and actually start blogging. You know, it was something that you're really fascinated about. So, in the initial few years, productivity was never a thing. But after a few years, when like, you know, blog started making some serious money and then I had to start working with people, then have to take care, started learning more about blogging, which is closely related to digital market. Like everything is digital marketing then. Like you had to do social media, had to do SEO, had to learn about user experience, conversion optimization. And I was like, wow, there's like so much more. And, you, you know, like, after a while, this I had to increase my speed. So basically now I have to do more in that limited 24 hour of time. That's the time I realized, okay, productivity is something, you know, that, that's the time I started thinking of optimizing my time. So the, when it comes to optimizing the time, the very first thing one should be taking care of, and this is what I did, is taking care of my mind. Like how can I do more in less time? And when I say do more, maintaining the same quality or improving the quality. So, so there are a few things which I started doing, like making a to-do list, like when uh, that th was a that was a game changer. Uh, especially when I'm writing and then something comes up in mind. So you know, just write down those tasks so that those tasks does not bother me anymore, and I can look into that later on. Um, then uh, checking into, you know, those Google ads and stats and then affiliate stats or Google analytics stats, I started decreasing doing all those tasks because that's meaningless. You know, it's better to look at them like once in a month or twice in a month. And then, uh, and then setting up time, like priorities for which task I should be doing more. So, so maybe there is 50 tasks that I want to do and I, I am probably going to enjoy all the 50, 50 of them. But the question is, which one of them should should I be doing first? And that usually comes when I started reflecting on the, all the tasks, like which one is going to move the uh, needle more. And that's how I started with the productivity. Now, talking about the tools that I use, um, so right now I'm using Wonderlist to manage my task. Okay. I use Trello, which is uh, which is a board kind of system, and which is currently I'm using for content uh, management. Like I put my ideas there, then we have boards for writing, editing, graphics, publishing, and after publishing. Um, and that's a system, like it took me a really long time to build that system, but yeah, it was something that helped us to help me 
to work with people uh, really fast then i i also use slack slack is usually i use because i have a team of two or three more people so we you know we use slack to uh, interact with each other evernote is another tool that i use all the time to make notes like even if i'm having a meeting or talking to somebody i use evernote um calendly is one tool which i started using like almost one and a half year back and anybody who is like an entrepreneur or who schedule meetings calendly is such a life saver and i remember like you also sent me calendly link to schedule a call with you so yeah yeah i, uh, I believe you know like how how useful calendly is absolutely and i think calend uh, i can't live without calendly in zoom you know that's uh, that's how i basically run my podcast uh, so uh, you know uh, when, when i started blogging i just uh, wrote you know uh, i made sure at least i had five blog posts and, and i launched the blog from there but what advice would you give to people who want to launch their blog in 2019 yeah okay so you know it's, it's, it's kind of interesting because you actually specifically mentioned that in 2019 because i believe you understand that a lot has changed in past few years is that true right. yeah yeah so you know like few years back probably one could launch a blog and then like that you know it's just it was very easy but in 2019 like people have actually understood that blogging is a real career option and then there are like influx of a lot of people all around the globe talking about every each and every topic so that means there is a lot of competition well uh that's necessarily not a bad thing because uh, at the same time uh, there is a great influx of lot of people who are coming online who never used internet and they are now now using internet a good example is uh, people from india brazil and lot of asian countries so th- so there is competition and there is also a lot of opportunity so now the most important thing that one should be doing is finding the perfect niche you know like a topic that they they should their blog should be about and this is more like a business planning like you know if you want to open a shop you don't you're not going to open any random shop you'll actually do your research to find out like which kind of business I, line of business i should get in that would help me to get maximum traction where there is less competition where there is more profit and the fourth one where i'm going to open my business and that also goes with the blogging like you first you pick a topic that you are interested in you look at the long it uh, you, you look at the that what is the trend of that topic going to be is that topic going to be sustainable after 2 year 3 years third you would you would also want to see like how much competition is there is it like too competitive and then you would be competing you would be you know the making a difference would be really a challenge so you that's where you do a lot of research you can use tools like longtail pro google trends cm rush hrefs so there are many tools uh, one can find all the information online about doing the competitive research and the fourth one which is which is something that people don't really pay attention to is that who are who is my audience is it going to be somebody you know which country you are going to target Uh, a lot of people play like you know that shotgun marketing kind of strategy that okay i am going to target all over the world i don't care if the people is coming from us or india or russia or australia but that's not a great approach it would be nice that you know who are probably going to be your top two or three country where uh, for whom you are writing that really helps you to create a content that is very much targeted to this people from this particular country so so these are the four pillars that you get started with right as that was a lot of valuable inputs i was busy taking notes uh, on 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 what you mentioned uh, i i i want to talk about what are the best monetization strategies uh, on your on your blog i know you've been very transparent in your income reports so uh, you know what what advice would you give to people who want to uh, monetize their blog yeah 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 so monetizing is something you know i probably i'm proud of that i often play and experiment with lot of monetization technique it's kind of something i enjoy doing um so in 2019 or in the coming years uh, let let me go on a order that i believe is going to be the most important sure. so number one is affiliate marketing no matter what it has become the real dinosaur uh, 
so affiliate marketing is something that one should look at especially like now you know when we actually create blog with a with an audience in mind with a topic in mind so we know who are who our audience is what do they want this is where affiliate marketing can make a real difference anywhere from $2 to $200 with single sale and and the beauty is you don't need like you know 1000 or 2000 uh, page views a day even if you are getting 100 page views of the people who are li- re- literally looking for your kind of content and even if you're making two to four sales hey here you go here is your 400 dollar a day you know that, 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 that that's a real money i mean but it it boils on that what is the strategy that you are following to create your blog now a, a lot of newbies or youngster or people who who have not done a lot of research they start with a blog and they blog on any random topic like you know some they talk, they talk about tech some they talk about their life some they talk about food you know any random stuff when well, for them something like google adsense media.net you know those contextual ad network is great okay. and in in that like you just simply sign up place those few line of codes on your website using some plugin and then just and your focus is just to drive traffic from anywhere and that's where you get paid so so that that, that would be good for short gun uh, marketing approach kind of people um the third one which is going to be real uh, game changer for a lot of people is online courses you know uh, that is basically like now our blog is our skills right we are create, we are selling a skill we are right. people can you find an angle which people would more likely to pay for for example in my case like people are always ready to pay me for seo and affiliate marketing because uh, I, i have a zeal for teaching so that's what my angle is now your angle is i mean when i say it, it could be like somebody who who is a food blogger or somebody who is a finance blogger let's say right. and he can create a course which actually help people to start from a to z about their pers- uh, finance management you know can that be done can they create a community well that's where the course come into the picture it can cost somewhere between you know uh, $50 a month to you know $1500 a year there are places like udemy where you can sell courses which i really don't like because they sell any course for cheap like i'm talking about $5 $10 rather you can actually sell the course on your own own website you can use easy digital download or member press kind of plugin if you are using wordpress you can also use third party solution like thinkific new kajabi to sell your course uh, the only thing is you need to find an angle like you know what is that your course is going to be about and just create a course do not worry about like you know okay i have to look good or great just create a course and you know just like any other thing we do in life after the iteration it gets better make um, make total sense yeah yeah so so that's a three top one i would uh, i recommend the fourth and the f- there are few others like you know put a contact page on your blog and put a media kit on your blog like an advertise page and let advertiser reach out to you for direct advertisement or sponsored review that adds a significant amount of revenue uh, social media promotion could is another great avenue um, selling your own ebooks on your blog or on, uh, or on your you know on amazon is another great revenue so here you go awesome and uh, you know uh, i believe uh, you make majority of income from affiliate marketing or uh, you know now it is spread across uh, different different Um, yeah so yeah. yeah so few i mean probably last till last year affiliate marketing was my biggest uh, income source but later on i i you know started spreading wide because i realized that it's better to, uh, i mean i always knew that like never put all all egg in one basket mm-hmm. but uh, affiliate marketing was was became the best but then we started focusing on other avenues like ebooks sponsored reviews uh, sponsored listings um or online course a uh, few other monetization technique that has helped us a lot so now now we are widely spread uh, statistically i still believe that affiliate marketing still constitute the maximum in terms of percentage got it uh, and you know i i now want uh, you know i just want to talk about uh, what are the best strategies to bring traffic to the site you know i use pin interest and instagram and few a few other uh, channels what what is what are the best strategies in your view to bring traffic uh, to the site in 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's a very good question, and you know, probably traffic is the most important ingredient to grow a blog. Right. And uh, and for a blog, like you know, when when the business model is not solid, paying for traffic, like you know, using paid ads is definitely not recommended in the initial days. Okay. Uh, but for a business blog, like you know, if you're serving B two B, then yes, paid ads is are great. Like it just serves the purpose. But but for somebody like me, like who's actually you know writing for an, an user, um, you know, I would say the SEO, search engine optimization, is what one should target, because then you're finding the people who are, who really need a solution to the content that you're creating. So for example, uh, with social media, uh, so there is another avenue called social media, like you know the one that you mentioned, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, others. Right. So then people are like just browsing and they find something interesting, they will click and they will read. On the other hand, social uh, SEO is where like people go f- to find a solution. Like, you know, like, hey, how, how do I drive traffic or how do I use X, Y, Z? And when these people come to your website or your blog uh, and they find a solution, if you're selling a product or uh, you're selling any information, people are more likely to buy because you're actually solving a pain and you're finding the user who are looking for this kind of solution. So for us, for short mill, we get about like, right now we're getting about 1.2 million page views a month and about 85% of our traffic comes from search engine optimization. Wow. Uh, for anybody who's starting out, like, you know, SEO is not rocket science. It's just like playing with like a few plugins, understanding how the whole system works. And I could tell you like within a month, if you're reading and implementing at the same time, you know, within a month, you, anyone would start seeing the result. Um, now, now coming back to social media, uh, before social media, like, you know, this one channel that YouTube is something I would recommend everyone to focus on. Um, it's again, the world's top uh, video search engine. So, you know, you create videos, you basically add your link as a card in your videos or even the first link in the description. Or you can also add your link in the, you know, basically the same description in the comment section and pin it. And that would, that actually drives a decent amount of traffic. Um, now, so social media is another great avenue. Technically, I never had great luck with social media because it requires a lot of time. Uh, and when I look at the time, uh, you know, time and benefit opportunity, I always feel that other revenue like SEO uh, or guest blogging or email marketing is much better. Uh, we, in fact, in fact, very uh, recently we removed Facebook uh, page link from our website. Like earlier, we used to ask people to subscribe to our Facebook page. Uh, we completely removed it because we realized that even though Facebook drives about five percent uh, traffic a month, which is actually good. But this traffic is not coming from the page. This traffic is coming from the people who are like actually sharing those link, uh, sharing or post on Facebook. So, you know, what's the point of like actually asking people to su- subscribe to our Facebook page? So we removed that. We started focusing more on YouTube and LinkedIn and Instagram at this moment. Okay. So, yeah. Right, awesome. So, so you know, I I I, I want to know what are what are the most important metrics uh, a newbie blogger should 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 check on when he's looking building his audience because th- there's just so many things he has to look into. You know, uh, making sure that uh, you know the page views are increasing, the email list is growing. So, what is in your view the most important metric uh, for for a newbie blogger to start with? Yeah, I think the two most important metrics is traffic and revenue. Okay. If, your tra- if your traffic is increasing and if your revenue is increasing, you know you are going. I mean, that's the first step. That's that's going. That, that's the first step. It's going good. Now, second, uh, you need to figure out like what is that you want to achieve. Is it going to be uh, so? Emails, email subscriber rate is something I would recommend. Highly recommend everyone to start building, because all the platform that we use, like even Google or even Facebook, they are becoming a closed platform. That means you can't be dependent on the platform forever to drive your traffic. Like for example, Facebook, like a few years back, you know, with the Facebook page, you could drive a lot of traffic. So basically having 10,000 people liking your Facebook page means you can always reach out to them. You know, you post an update, a lot of people see, and that, that traffic used to convert. Now on the Google on the other hand, which is like a search engine, but actually Google is a, you know, an ad company. So if if you if you have noticed like now these days when you search for flight or your you know 
uh, hotel booking or even when you are uh, looking for information google gives all this information within the search result that means the industry like the people who used to rely on traffic from google in this particular verticals industry they are actually not getting the traffic and sooner or later this is what how it's going to happen so question is how can you reach out to your own audience how you can own your own audience so that's where the email marketing come into the picture and that's another vertical that's another metric that i would i recommend everyone to start looking at from the day one like even if you get like two if you're getting two email subscriber a day look for 2000 and then look for you know i don't know, like just make sure that by percentage wise your email subscription rate is increasing each and every day um every time on pay now coming back to the analytic part like every time on page is another important metric scroll depth is another important metric like you know at what level like you know people are reading all of your content or people are living at after reading the quarter of your content or half of the content so that's another uh, great area um yeah pretty much that's it. that that's all i could i could add right now with Okay, uh, so Harsh, uh, you know, I want to know: Is it okay to ha- hire writers for for your blog, or should one focus on writing their own content? Uh, and also, what are your your views on guest blogging? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, that's like that, that's a very interesting question because and that's a, that's a lot of question in one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, working with writers, yes. Why not? You know, few. I think like few years back, I used I used to be against this. theory like oh, why to work with writers you should like just blog whatever you like and you know your blog should be your property but but as the whole industry has grown and then there are like people who are subject matter expert like who can really do a better job than you writing certain kind of content so it's good to have a writer um i i i i know people who actually follow you know one of these three kind of mechanism one a blogger who actually write all of their content um number 2 are the bloggers who write most of their content and they also have writers who help them write the content and number 3 are the blog are the bloggers who actually don't write any of the content they actually uh, delegate everything to the writers they work on the strategy they work on the other aspect of blogging like you know maintaining the email list design seo so they basically are the managers they are not the creators uh the first two are the people who are also creator the first one is the creator the second one is creator plus the manager and right right now talking about me i am actually at the junction of being a uh, creator and the manager so uh working with writer is definitely one should start looking at because the sheer amount of content that one should be generating now uh you know doing it all by themselves is not is not feasible all the time uh w- one idea that i could give that actually makes makes a lot of difference when working with writer is uh if you are the content strategist like if you are somebody who's actually writing your own content and you need help with the writers you know work on the content uh concept by yourself like create an outline of that how do you want your content to be like what are the sub topics that writer should be covering uh so basically that is called content brief a uh, spend time creating a good brief like you know usually it it can take up to 25 to half an hour to create a good brief which which people say like hey i can actually create a content in that time but uh, but the thing is like you know if you create a great content brief if you if you give it to a writer you know the content would come out really amazing uh so yeah that, that, that that's one tip i could give you when working with the writers now uh coming back to your second question about the guest blogging yes uh guest blogging is something one should do it's like basically building relationship with other bloggers getting featured on somebody else property on somebody else community uh so yeah guest blogging is still another great way to gain backlinks which is something uh which is one of the pillar of search engine optimization um and you know it's kind of funny that i don't do a lot of backlink a lot of guest blogging per se i mean maybe like four or five days blog a year uh, basically it has to do with the time but if i if i can go back and start you know uh, and have a lot of time i would do a lot of guess blogging correct correct so so you know uh, since you've been uh, blogging and you making uh, you know great income from your blog you got time to travel the world um, so you know i i happen to know that you went to antarctica uh which is which is a continent which a lo- lot of people 
cannot dream of going. So, you so can I talk a little bit about your travel experience there, and how do you? How was your experience in Antarctica and, and your other travel experiences you've had uh, over the years? Yeah. So you know, Antarctica was like something I've never thought even in my wildest dream that I would ever go to Antarctica. So, uh, right. Like, I love traveling. And I love uh, things like adventure sports, you know, scuba and stuff. But uh, Antarctica was a dream from my wife. Like she always thought like, we'll go to Antarctica. And she also wanted to go to Japan. So, and I don't know, I was traveling from Pune and I saw this ad, like go to Antarctica. And I was like, wow, like, is it really happening? I filled up the form and like these people, this company called Q Travels, they are basically luxury travels from Mumbai. They emailed and said like, hey, we are going to, Antarctica and this trip was really, really expensive. Probably one would like to pay only one time and I'm like, okay, should we do this or not? Because it's expensive. Uh, we knew like it's a one-time opportunity, let's do this. And and then like now uh, in December 2017, we, we traveled to Buenos Aires, uh, Ushuaia, and from there we took a cruise. It was like a 10 days cruise. Uh, and then we traveled to Antarctica now. I could tell you one thing, it's an alien land. You know, uh, when, you, when you reach there, you don't feel like that you, you are at a place which is, uh, which is like any other place in the earth. There are like penguins colony and the only human is like the people that you are with, like your, your team. And we used to uh, go for an expedition, like, you know, we ha- used to have this small boat called Zodiac. Our, our cruise used to park like almost like five kilometers away from the shore. Then we used to set on the Zodiac, go to the uh, go to the small, small island. We used to track there and it was magnificent. It's like while telling you, I can actually imagine the place and feel like how I used to feel there. You know, there's breaking of glacier and the sound. There is not even a single noise. Well, Antarctica is, a, is, is it's like one of the best place I've ever been. So, yeah, uh, it's 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 one of the memory that I would cherish. I think I believe till the time I will have memories. I, I I can totally sense you know the kind of adventure you've had there. Uh, you know, uh, I, I hope uh, you know I could ever go to Antarctica uh, ever in my life. But uh, you know, I. I you have a big audacious goal uh, to make blogging as a career option uh, for 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 people in in, in India and across the world. So, so, what is the next big thing for Harsh and and, sh- and shout me loud? Yeah. Uh, so, so you know, my dream is still the same. I want to help people uh, earn money. I want to help people earn money in the right way, like following their passion, following their dreams. And uh, I still believe that blogging and YouTube uh, are the best way to go about it. And that's that's what that's going to be my focus for. for uh, that's is, that is my what my focus is for the next few years. Uh, now, one challenge which I've always faced is like you know people always wanted to get more. Like, hey, Arsh, can you help us uh, get more? So, uh, so what's happening is like you know let's say we get about fifty thousand people on our blog every day, and and basically about two hundred or three hundred people are super serious about blogging. And out of them, let's say ten percent, like twenty people, are the one who actually want ready to, you know, take this as super serious. Like they are ready to work 16 hours a day and, but they want something more concrete. They want something more, uh, you know, something that they can actually use like a blueprint, like a checklist, like the things which are, uh, which, which are usually not available on the, on the blog. And we realized that that's, that's a, that's a real requirement. And that's where I started focusing on creating short university, which was always there from last two years and people are using it for AdSense, affiliate marketing, SEO. But now I'm like combining everything into like one single course, like, you know, it's a one single membership thing where you're coming, uh, you become a part of the community. You also get like one-on-one interaction with uh, the community where you can discuss the pain point. And since everyone is like the people who are super serious about, you know, building their career online, uh, I think it, it it's going to, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of value addition. So the platform name is Shout University. We'll have a certificate. We have we'll have certification and stuff, which will also help you to if you're like let's say if you're in college or somewhere, you can actually use this certificate to show in your resume to uh, in case if you actually want to get into you know digital marketing or any other aspect of the online career. And what's the price of the course? So uh, it's going to be four ninety nine dollar one time one time payment for a year. 
Okay, well, we will put that in the show notes. Uh, so let's quickly do the top three. What's your favorite business book? Huh. Okay. Um, the one that I'm reading right now is called Traction. It's basically help you to understand, uh, you know, uh, your business, your value, your mission, your vision. And it's a fantastic read for somebody who's actually, you know, who have a team and who's trying to grow, but feel like they're stuck somewhere. Uh, so Traction is the one that I could recommend. Got it. And if you could go back in time when you started blog, blogging, what is the one thing you would have focused on or one thing you would have done differently? Mm, honestly, nothing. <laughs> yeah. okay. I, 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 it's, it's been a journey. Like, you know, everything that I did, like there was like a lot of good stuff I did. There was a lot of mistakes I did, but they were all learning. Can I go back and remove all my mistakes? Um, perhaps no, because otherwise I would not have learned or whatever I have learned. Uh, if there's one thing that, you know, like, if I could still think like there's one thing that I wanted to do or I could have done or which I still want to do is like build a big team, have like more people uh, have that audacity to like work with a lot of people at the same time while maintaining my creativity is something I wish I could learn faster and I could have done faster. Okay. And what's your favorite online tools? For example, Gmail, Slack, Calendly, whatever. Oh, uh, I'm a tool guy. Like, uh, if you ask me, like in a particular vertical, I could help you because I, I mean, I use a lot of tools. I okay. already told you Wonderlist, Wonderlist, Evernote, Slack, Trello. That's something which I use all the time. Um, yeah. So, so, so you know, it's really hard to pick one. I mean, Gmail and all they are basic. Basically, everyone who's getting online is using it. Uh, I, I can tell you from certain verticals that I use the tools that I use. So. From SEO verticals, I use Hrefs and SEMrush. These are the two tools I've been using uh, lately. From the blogging, I use Word, WordPress. That's the tool I use. Uh, from podcast mic, the one that I'm talking to, uh, okay. I, I love Blue Yeti. Which one do you use? Uh, no, no, are, you, are you talking about editing uh, the podcast? Podcast recording for the audio. audio. Yeah, no, I, I, I pretty much use Zoom to, to record on my podcast, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the audio input device. Like I, I use a Blue Yeti mic. Which mic do you use? Yeah, I, I also use Blue uh, uh, Yeti mic. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, for the videos, I use Camtasia. That's basically help you to record screencast. So, so yeah. Uh, I, I believe like you asked me one and I gave you so many. So sorry about that. No, absolutely. We, we, we're going to put all these on, on the on the show notes. Uh, and what is the best way people can reach out to Harsh and get to know more about uh, your blog? Yeah, uh, so I'm quite active on my blog itself, like denharsh.com or uh, shoutmailout.com. Uh, the best way is like you can subscribe to my uh, email newsletter. The, uh, it's available like on the homepage or even on the single post. Uh, if you like social media, then you can connect to me on Instagram. Uh, my handle is denharsh. That's D E N H A R S H. Um, yeah, uh, so these are the best places where you can find me. Right. Thank you, Harsh, for coming onto the show. I really enjoyed speaking to you. I'm sure listeners would have learned a lot from you and, and they would, you know, love to come back to your blog and learn more about blogging. Yeah. Thank you, Rohit. I mean, it's a pleasure being on your show. And I know, like, you, have, uh, you and me, um, for, for the listener, like, who don't know, so Rohit and me, we live in the same society <laughs> and, <laughs> and we, get, we got in touch like almost one year back and we thought about doing this podcast. He asked me and here we are like in after a year. I'm really glad that now this is, we actually get to do this and I believe we'll be hanging out more because, you know, like I think like my name people, it just adds value to each, everyone's life. So thank you, Rohit. Ab- absolutely, man. We should, we should definitely hang out more. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye-bye. Have a good one.